Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 32 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more free from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure you have watched part 1 to part 31. Let's take some question. Let's explain the formation of chemical bond. Very basic question. Why do we have chemical bond? Chemical bond is what? Attractive force that binds atoms or ions together. Correct. And there are various theories for the uh, chemical bond, we have uh, VSEPR, we have valence bond theory, molecular orbital theory and we have Lewis theory also. There are so many theories for chemical bond, right? But all these theory talks about the fact that a chemical bond is formed to attain stability, right? To reduce the energy. Stability is the goal of all the atoms and that's why they combine chemically. It was observed that the noble gas have filled outermost electrons and hence they are uh, stable, right? So it was postulated that elements having incomplete outermost cells are unstable. By observation they have seen that they have some of the stable elements, they have complete outermost cell and they are unstable elements for which the outermost cell is not complete, right? And that's why it says that atom combine to reach the nearest noble gas configuration, either by transferring electron or sharing electron. Correct. So this can occur by transferring or sharing electron based on we are talking about covalent bond or ionic bond. So when it shares electron, it's called covalent bond, and when it transfers electron, it's called ionic bond. That's the whole story about bond. So there are various theories, but the main theory is about the stability to attain stability. To attain stability, either they sometimes transfer electron or sometimes share electron. So we have different scenarios I explained. For example, sodium chloride, sodium ready to give electron, one extra, one extra electron it has. If it gives electron, it will become stable. Chlorine is ready to take one electron. Normally it takes electron, it becomes stable. So in that case, transfer of electron will take place. But for example, we have hydrogen and hydrogen. Both are not willing to give electrons, so they will share them. So this is ionic bond and this is covalent bond. To derive the Lewis dot structure, manganese has two valence electron. This is my Lewis structure. Sodium has one valence electron. Bromine has three valence electron. Oxygen has six valence electron. Nitrogen has five. And bromine has seven. Right? So, this guy 2, sodium 1, boron 3, oxygen 6, nitrogen 5, and chromium 7. This is my Lewis dot structure. A symbol actually. We write the Lewis dot symbol for this sulfur. It has 6 valence electrons. So, sulfur will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right? S minus 2, 2 more extra electrons it has got. So it has 8 electrons. So let's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and minus 2 charge. Correct. Okay. Aluminium has 3 valence electron. Aluminium plus 3, no valence electron. Why? Because 3 is gone here. Right? Plus 3 means 3 electrons are gone. Hydrogen has 1 valence electron. Hydrogen minus 1, that means one extra electron it has got and it has got a negative charge. Correct. Now we will draw the structure. Please understand the difference between symbol and structure. So when we talk about sodium, potassium, these are all symbols. But when we talk about structure, we talk about structure of molecule. Right? We talk about symbol for atoms and we talk about structure for molecules. So if we draw structure for S2S, let's do this first. Sulfur, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 valence electron. And hydrogen I have. Right? So let's join these S2S. This is the Lewis structure. Correct? SiCl4. So let's draw SiCl4 like this. 
silicon has four valence electron chlorine has seven seven into four 28 plus 4 32 so we start with 32 so we have four bond eight electrons gone so we have 20 four each of the chlorine will need six electron correct to attain the valence state because it has two now so each will take six 24 is also gone and they are stable let's take bef2 Let's draw it B, F2, B, F and F, sorry. Right? Beryllium has 2, valence electron, fluorine has 7, 7 into 14, 16. So out of 16, my 4 is gone in the bond, 2 bond, we are left with 12. Beryllium is happy. We have 12 electron, we'll give 6 each to this fluorine. They'll also be happy because Chlorine has two electrons now. Correct. Let's take CO3 minus 2. So we have carbon, we have oxygen, oxygen and oxygen. So we have carbon, we have 4. Oxygen, we have 6 into 3, 18. Plus minus 2 charge, we have 2, so we have 24. We know the structure of this, we have done this in the previous, uh, in a few of the videos before. So I will not spend time on this. The structure of CO3-2 is something like this. If you have issues, you can just watch my previous videos where we explained the structure of uh, CO3-2. It's a resonance structure actually. Similarly, SCOH will be something like this. I will not spend time on this, how to draw the structure because we have done this example in the previous videos what is octet rule what is the significance and limitation so octet rule says that atoms combine either by transfer or by share of electron the valence electron to attain the nearest noble gas configuration in the valence cell so valence cell should have noble gas configuration to achieve that they Combine either by transfer of electron or sharing of electron. The limitation of theory, the first thing is it failed to create the shape or stability of the molecule. It is based on the noble gases uh, inertness, but there are some noble gases which form compound like XeF2. It cannot be applied for third period uh, elements because they have d orbitals also. They, they can have more than eight valence electrons and this is not satisfied for all the atoms having odd number of electrons for example NO, NO2 they don't satisfy the octet what are the favorable conditions for forming of ionic bond so pretty simple low ionization enthalpy of metal atoms high gain enthalpy of non-metal atom and a high lattice energy because as I told that example you have Na plus and Cl minus becomes NaCl so there are three energy involved. First is the ionization energy, right? You get Na plus. Then electron gain enthalpy energy. In this, you get Cl minus. And in the lattice energy, where you um, form the uh, lattice structure. So if this is low, because this has to be given always, right? This is um, endothermic. If this has to be low, this if you are talking about high exothermic plus high value high value, high value of this, this is low value of this and high because this is exothermic always the lattice energy is always exothermic so we are looking for high value of this lattice energy high value of this guy, this is this, this is this, this is this so since the ionization energy is always endothermic so we are looking for low value of this electron gain enthalpy can be exothermic or endothermic board so we are looking for high exothermic value of this Lattice energy is always exothermic, so we are looking for high value of this. So if you have these, it is a favorable condition for forming ionic bond. We have discussed the shape of uh, BCL2, BCL3, SICL4, all this using Vesper theory. So let's try this BCL2, BCL, Cl. There is no lone pair, so it is. 2 bond pair plus 0 lone pair. 
What does it mean? It means linear. Correct? That's what my Vespa theory says. Then I have VCL3, I have VCL, CL, CL. There is no lone pair also here because group. So the boron had three electrons in the valence cell and everything is filled. So there is no uh, lone pair here. So it has three bond pair plus zero lone pair. So it is trigonal planar. Correct. Let's talk about SiCl4. Si also, if you see, it has four valence electron and all are filled now, right? All are used in this bonding. There is four bond pair but zero lone pair, right? So this is a tetrahedral shape. If you're having issues in understanding this, watch the previous, uh, watch the videos on this where we've explained that if there is a four bond pair and zero lone pair, it has to be tetrahedral, right? We talk about ASF5. So ASF5 also, if you see, I'm just drawing like this, just like that. It has zero lone pair, five bond pair, and zero lone pair. So in that case, it it was trigonal by pyramid. We talk about S2S. So you have sulfur, you have hydrogen, hydrogen. So we have one lone pair. So you have one lone pair plus two bond pair that is a bent shape. Then we have pH 3. So we have pH, H, H and then one lone pair here. Correct? Because phosphorus has five valence electron. Three is used in bonding. One pair is three. So it is three bond pair plus one lone pair. So one lone pair and three bond pair gives trigonal by pyramid. This is something we should remember actually. So three bond pair plus one lone pair gives what? All this thing we have to remember. The question says although the geometry of ammonia and water are distorted, tetrahedral, bond angle in water is less than ammonia. Why? So if you see this ammonia N H H H and water, in water I have two lone pair. In ammonia I have one lone pair, right? Because ammonia has five valence electron, three is used in bonding, and two are here. Oxygen has six valence electron, two is used in bonding, and two are four are free. So if you see this guy has one lone pair plus three bond pair. This guy has two lone pair plus two bond pair. So this guy repulsion is more. Is more. That's why the bond angle of water is less. This angle is less. Correct? Repulsion is more, the angle is less. How do you express bond strength in terms of bond order? As I told that uh, bond strength is uh, directly proportional to bond order. So if you have triple bond, more strength, double bond, less strength, single bond, less strength. So it's directly proportional to bond order. What is bond length? So bond length is nothing but equilibrium distance between the nuclei of two bonded atoms in a molecule. So if there are two atoms in a molecule, the equilibrium distance between these are, and this is nothing but uh, some of the covalent radii actually. And they are expressed in terms of uh, picometer or angstrom, and they are measured by X-ray diffraction, spectroscopic, and there are so many uh, electron diffraction techniques. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.